insights into consciousness have a direct consequence and imply that life is not restricted to planet Earth. Of course, there are weird stories circulating about this, which is logical when you're dealing with a mystery. But surprisingly enough, just this mystery has the most evidence. What we know is that 7% about of the adult population of the world have seen UFOs. That is true in the military as it is in the civilian sector. It's a matter of empirical fact that we're conscious. It's a matter of empirical fact that, that there are UFOs and that they are able to, for example, they're able to uh, do maneuvers that our jet aircraft cannot do. When I say multi-sensory, they're caught on satellites, they're caught on film, they're caught on radar. You know, just about every sensor system we have out there has caught them many times at the same time. So there's no doubt about the physical reality of the incident. Some of them may be carbon-based like we, some of them may be silicon-based, some of them might be based, on, based on, on electromagnetic vortices existing in some plasma medium. I mean, uh, there, some of them could be on a completely different plane of materiality, some, astro, some other kind of level. Um, so what? The Condon report was actually right. Because the question to Condon was not, do UFOs exist? It was, are UFOs a threat? First of all, I do believe we're in cosmic quarantine and, and they wouldn't really want to sort of be fraternizing with us on a sort of, hey there, type basis. They might observe and monitor and study, but they certainly wouldn't want to get too close. We are dangerous. We are killers. We're psychopaths. We're not really good neighbors. Their purpose is, so to speak, to drive us up the evolutionary ladder, whether we like it or not, by subjecting us to experiences that completely change our ordinary paradigm. And that, that in other words, their aim is to create a paradigm shift in the human race. Mind creates matter. This also means that matter reacts to our thoughts. The ultimate consequence could be that collective thoughts can strongly influence the Earth and even matter beyond our planet. Failure to understand this link could be a main reason for individuals ignoring major recent threats to the future of the planet, such as global warming, pollution, and exhausting natural resources. I'm very involved in the greatest threat facing our world, global warming. This is something that is so big, and you would think to everyone, so obvious, that it's the number one problem. Because if we don't do something about it pretty quick, we won't be around. If consciousness mirrors the solar system, then it wouldn't be strange that while consciousness attunes to the soul, the solar system also attunes to the sun. This could have an immediate effect on the absorption of sunlight for the planets and increased temperatures. In such a case, we would have another dimension to think about as the cause of global warming. The universe is strewn with life. In our own solar system alone, there are several intelligent life forms developing consciousness in various ways. However, not in the physical form as we know it. But these life forms also originate from the great consciousness. They demonstrate a strong relationship with mankind since they also evolve within the same great consciousness. So the faster we as mankind become aware of our origin and capacity and live accordingly, the sooner we'll be able to cooperate constructively and consciously within and outside the solar system. When we understand consciousness, the idea of other life forms in our solar system is simple to grasp. 